Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. All right. So everybody, most welcome. Uh, it's a warm welcome to everybody, and I know you are all excited to be pa uh, part of this occasion here. Uh, we have our beloved uh, space celebrity today here, and uh, everybody is dying to hear her out. So we start with the proceedings, and uh, first and foremost, I want to welcome uh, all my dear students uh, for being here today. Uh, I know you have uh, exams and lot many things going on, but you came here today, that shows how much you love her. So that's for sure. Beyond that, uh, I would like to also welcome the teachers who are accompanying here today uh, with these students. Uh, it takes you uh, to shape them up, so thank you for that. Uh, and I would also like to welcome all the principals uh, as a head, as a head of institution. Um, you are playing a great role for uh, making sure that kids are maturing and growing well. Uh, with that, uh, I would uh, like to welcome everybody and uh, wish everybody a great uh, uh, time here and uh, hope you enjoy uh, what we have put together for you. Uh, it's, it's a little different format today and I think that uh, is the surprise element of the uh, uh, meeting today. Uh, we are going to move away from the usual uh, talk structure and uh, more do a more candid fireside chat with Sunita Williams. Uh, with that, I would first like to welcome uh, on stage uh, Mr. Sachin Bhamba, who is the uh, CMD of Space Group. And uh, I mean, it is with his efforts and his start uh, that we are all here today. And uh, uh, he's an, uh, I think many of us already know uh, uh, in the crowd as well, he's a wildlife enthusiast. Uh, uh, he's uh, an astronomer uh, since childhood. And uh, uh, though he is a graduate and postgraduate in science, I think his love has always been outdoor and nature. Uh, so today, uh, he will be the one who will be uh, having that discussion with uh, uh, Sunita Williams and uh, uh, asking questions to her. And uh, now I think it's time uh, to uh, introduce uh, none other than Captain Sunita Williams. So uh, with that, Please be seated. Please be seated. Uh, we all know Captain Sunita Williams. Uh, we have uh, uh, read about her. We have gone online and searched about her. But let me give you a small introduction, uh, though she already is, uh, you know, she doesn't uh, need to have an introduction. Uh, she is an American astronaut and Indian uh, United States uh, Navy officer of Indian Slovenian origin. She has spent a total of 322 days on two missions, and she ranks on the all-time U.S. endurance list and second all time for a female. With 50 hours and 40 minutes, she holds a record total cumulative spacewalk time by a female astronaut. While on Earth, she has logged more than 3,000 flight hours in over 30 different aircrafts during her time with the United States Navy. Captain Williams is married to Michael J. Williams, uh, a crazy Jack Russell Terrier uh, named Gorby, and a Labrador retriever named Bailey add their share of excitement to their lives. Uh, her paternal ancestry is from uh, Julasan, Mehsana district, uh, Gujarat. And uh, while she was up uh, at the International Space Station, uh, she carried with her the Bhagavad Gita, a small uh, figurine of uh, Lord Ganesha, and some samosas. And I am sure there is a question coming on that. Uh, so with that and a lot more of questions uh, about her, I'll hand this over now to uh, Sachin sir to carry it on and uh, have a discussion with her. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? I have not checked my mic. Okay, so we have Sunita Williams here, and it is always easy to start a conversation with someone who does not need any introduction. Okay. Hello. Am I? Can somebody do this Take from technical team? Can you do something? Hello. Hello. Mic check. Hello. 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 Okay, I'll use this mic till somebody works on this. So I was saying it's always easy to chat with someone who actually does not need any introduction. So I am. Uh, she has been introduced to you, and I'll start uh, uh, 
uh, from something which is very personal. Probably we have heard a lot, heard her a lot, seen so many YouTube videos. I'll try to cover uh, the aspects of her life which have not been talked about, probably push her to the level where she shares something that might even be embarrassing. So uh, let's start this uh, chat and I thank Amit for this wonderful idea of having a fireside chat with Sunita Williams. I'm sure I am now being made a celebrity today, sitting with Sunita Williams and uh, <laughs> probably uh, the most searched person today on internet. So I'll start with her childhood. You know, we all know that she has an Indian uh, origin. So mm -hmm. your uh, uh, grandmother, great grandmother uh, went to US. And uh, have you heard about stories of India when you were a child? And uh, have you ever visited India while you were a child or not? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Is my mic on too? Uh, I'm not sure. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think the first time, I'm trying to remember now because I was pretty young. First time I came to India was uh, when I was, I think, about eight years old, if I remember correctly. And um, it was uh, a big deal for us all to come. I have an older brother and an older sister. And at one point in time before, when I was just a, a very, very young, like just a baby, my brother had come to India, of course, because he was the first and okay. you know he's the boy so he came to India first and so we had heard stories from my mom who's not of Indian descent so it was big impression on her when she came so I was really looking forward to seeing elephants and mongoose <laughs> and I saw elephants and okay. mongoose so uh, my my impressions of course when I came here uh, was a very foreign land um, and a long flight to get here but then we got to see all the villages or in areas where my dad my father has had grown up and uh, one of the greatest impressions of course I got my elephant ride uh, I saw a, a cobra with mongoose and of course I'm a big <laughs> animal fan so I was all loving all this stuff I wanted to take a mongoose home and as we were driving down a beautiful road with big huge trees going to the small village where my father had grown up, there was a, a herder with uh, camels. Okay. And uh, they, he had a baby camel. And of course, I was wanting to take everything in my suitcase home with me. So I said, can I take the baby camel home with me? And I could see the baby camel like as far as that wall. And so my dad stopped the car and made the herder bring the camel over to where we were. It was a baby camel, but the baby camel was about this big. So then I decided maybe that's a little too big for my suitcase. So we didn't take the, we didn't bring the baby camel home. But um, seriously, uh, of course that those are true stories. But I think the most overwhelming thing uh, that I remember from that first trip was how nice the people were. Um, when we went to the village, there was probably over 3,000 people following us everywhere we were going. Okay. But they, and so as a little child, this is pretty intimidating, but everybody was so nice to us. And I actually did get a camel ride in that city too, because then, of course, my father explained this camel situation. And so to the village trying to somehow make me happy that I wasn't going to take a camel home, uh, they put my sister and my brother and myself on a camel and we had a camel ride all around the neighborhood. So um, absolutely wonderful people, a lot of people who just wanted to make you feel at home and make you feel oh. part of this country. Glad, so glad, a glad to hear that. A wonderful yeah. impression from when I was a kid. Uh, so while you were a kid, you thought of becoming an astronaut. I want to know exactly, probably, you know, bring you to an incident uh, where you thought of uh, deciding a career for yourself. See, right now you are an inspiration to every woman all around the world. You know, you rule their heart. So they need to know uh, how this journey of becoming an astronaut happened. What were your initial thoughts as a child? Because they all are confused, you know, what they want to do. Sometimes they want to be this, sometimes they want to be that. And uh, I'm sure if I ask uh, here uh, kids to raise their, how many of you want to be astronauts? Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to be an astronaut. and. Uh, I'm sure you know most of them want to enter into the field of sciences, astronomy and space science and maybe astronauts. So how did you decide uh, what you are today? Well, I, I think I'm still confused uh, <laughs> because, of course, uh, I, I am an astronaut. That's my profession and I, and I love it. Um, but I still would like to do what I wanted to do when I was a little kid as well as um, you know, work with animals and be a veterinarian. I think I, you know, I made it clear that I, I love animals and I've loved animals since I was little. So when I was young, my thought was, oh, I want to be a veterinarian. But I really didn't know. 
I think it's hard for anybody to understand really what their uh, true passions are when you're, when you're very young. Um, and so my, my advice, and I think what happened to me more so, is um, try different things. And sometimes things become, uh, are not what you expect. Um, I was talking earlier today to some students about thinking about university, because I think some people in this audience are thinking about where you're going to go uh, to university after you finish high school. And I had in my mind an idea, this is what I was going to do, this is where I was going to go. And actually, I didn't get into the first and second and third uh, selection or choices of universities that I wanted to get oh. into. So I was sort of surprised because I was a good student. I was an athlete in school also, and I was wondering why this happened. Feeling a little bit um, sad about this situation, like maybe my life was going to be over, uh, and <laughs> not knowing you know, if I had you know, lived up to my parents' expectations. Um, but I went, uh, I joined the military, joined the Navy, uh, with a suggestion from my brother. And I think okay. that was a big decision point in my life. Um, but I didn't know what that decision point was even going to lead me to. I didn't know what was behind that door. And I just sort of took that leap and said, OK, here we go. We'll, we'll try this. And I found out that the stuff that they did there, um, learning, uh, of, of course, a little bit of engineering and science, uh, learning a lot about teamwork, leadership, followership, is what the military and small groups of scouts and things like that all are characteristics of. I really like that a whole lot. And I think that's why I was good at what I was doing. And I ended up learning how to fly helicopters, ended up being a test pilot. Um, but some of those things were not my first choices along the way. Like, of course, I, uh, you know, I wanted to be a jet pilot, but I, I was a helicopter pilot. Um, and I had never idea, no idea that how to fly a helicopter or anything what they did. Um, but that opened the new, new doors and new opportunities and got me interested in learning about uh, being a test pilot and learning how to land maybe on the moon, because that's what they used helicopter type equipment to land, to practice landing for landing on the moon. Okay. So I was like, wow, maybe these things will work out. So um, my life was not straightforward, and I, I would suggest to all the young folks out here, uh, don't be so set in one way and, and follow down a path that maybe you might find that you don't like. If you, if you try, try, try everything, try new things and see something that you might like. Uh, okay, might I, I am curious, you know, what were your uh, favorite subjects while, while you were in school and uh, studying, you know, what did you love? And also, you know, how are you so connected to sports? Was it there uh, in mm -hmm. you as a kid uh, or, you know, it developed later on? Um, I, I think uh, sports, subjects, I liked science a whole lot. Oh. I don't know. I think just because my dad was a scientist, my dad was a doctor, and he used to take us to this laboratory, and we used to see, look in his electron microscope. I don't know what I was looking at, but we would look in there and see little things wiggling around. I thought that was cool. And, um, you know, just, just thinking about how things worked, I liked looking at rocks and trying to understand how oh. the planet was made and learning about uh, earthquakes and plates and things like that. So I, I really liked earth science. I really liked physics when I was um, growing up, too, because it's very logical. Um, I, I liked math OK. Math was, was fine until uh, I had to carry this big book home, and I hated carrying the big book home. So <laughs> I used to get my math homework done very fast during lunchtime so I didn't have to carry my book home, which I think made me good at math. So, that, so I, I think school came um, not necessarily easy. I, I worked hard at school, but I liked it. I really enjoyed school. Um, and uh, for sports, well, you know, my dad, of course, grew up here in India. And actually, the story goes that he uh, f fell into a lake and almost drowned. And uh, so when he was, Whoa. this left an impression on him. And so he had me and my sister and my brother learn how to swim. I think I learned how to swim before I knew how to walk. He threw all of us in the pool <laughs> there ready to save us. But uh, we all knew how to swim right from the very beginning. And then uh, we became competitive swimmers and, and went to swimming practice before school and after school. OK, at uh, some stage of your education, it actually is, actually is very clear that that is the point where you decided, yes, I would like to try to be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. So how did uh, that happen? How did it strike to you? And uh, what all you did uh, for uh, 
uh, becoming an astronaut and getting enrolled to the uh, NASA program. So, uh, you know, I mentioned being a helicopter pilot. That's not whatever what I had thought was typical to be an astronaut. Uh, so, when I was at test pilot school, I met a bunch of jet pilots who were all excited about going down and, and, and applying to be astronauts, and I didn't even still didn't consider it. Um, but when we went there, I learned a little bit more about what they did, and I found out that, uh, oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, they do have helicopter pilots. Oh, as a matter of fact, they do have doctors. They even have a veterinarian. They have teachers. They have engineers. They have chemists. They have physicists. They have any scientific field that anybody has. And so I thought to myself, wow, probably the only one who's really telling me right now that I can't be an astronaut is myself. So all I got to okay. do is apply. So, you know, I looked at the paperwork and found out what I needed to do. And one of the things that is typical to make you competitive to be an astronaut is most people have a, a secondary degree, a master's okay. degree, and the sci a lot of the scientists have a, a PhD. I don't know if I was ready for a PhD. That's really smart stuff. But <laughs> a master's, I was like, okay, I can understand this. I could maybe do this. So I, I uh, figured out that I needed to get a master's degree, and um, I ended up applying two times. A lot of people apply a number of times, um, but that if it's your dream, it's your passion, it's what you want to do, I think you continually try to work at your application and make yourself apply. Yeah, uh, I think you know uh, uh, she has rightly put forward that you know you have to look forward to what your dream is, uh, work in that direction. Probably you will find uh, what is best for you. Uh, now, once you were selected for uh, uh, the NASA astronaut program. Uh, just take us through the training, what all goes through in that and you know what kind of trainings you are put to and what kind of uh, mental and physical uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, training goes into uh, training of an astronaut. So when you're selected, you know, you're thinking, okay, now I'm an astronaut. Well, you're not. Uh, you're, you're an astronaut candidate. Uh, so the next uh, couple years, two years or so, and a lot of people think, wow, this is taking a long time. But I, I'll, I'll tell you a secret, it's a lot of fun, so I, don't, I didn't even mind that it took a long time. So uh, for about two years, you're learning about spacecraft um, and learning about all the things that we do at NASA and also the other space agencies around the world, what we do. And uh, you also learn how you're going to be part of that, either maybe driving the robotic arm or doing spacewalks. So